Hello. Uh, you're talking and oh, it's Malayalam. Um, so I'm going to ask the audience: How many of the people doesn't know Malayalam? English <laughs> 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 uh, Anyway, so this talk is titled Payan, Freakan, and Minanyan. So the translation, literal translation in English would be Payan, Freakan, and Me. Okay. Uh, so this title is not a clickbait. It is 100% what the title is going to say. The talk is going to be 100% what it is. It is not a clickbait at all. So you can see a couple of characters in the title as well, uh, which is kind of undistinguishable. Okay. So uh, I was okay. This is a joke I have to say. Uh, I will start with who is me, and then I will say who is freaking and the Payan. Okay. So about me. Uh, my name is Subin. I am uh, doing free software for about 10 years now. I started with when I was age 13. Uh, I am currently one of the tech leads at Big Binary. Uh, we are a Ruby, it's a Ruby on Rails consultancy company. I am mostly volunteer Sodhendra Malayalam Computing. So it's a free software collective uh, that mostly focuses on bringing Malayalam into computers. I am also volunteer at Wikipedia and Debian. Okay, so this talk is going to be very much uh, about SMC, Sodhendra Malayalam Computing. And the things that I am going to take, uh, say here is also very much related to SMC. So the SMC's website is smc.org and we have a very active telegram group on SMC underscore project. SMC was started in 2001 at NIT Calica. It's been a long time. Um, one of my goal with this talk is to get gain more new contributors to SMC because it's been too long, it's about 20, 23 years now this organization has started, but most people I don't think know that such an organization exists. So marketing outreach, I would say. Okay, uh, I think that I have a couple of questions that I asked. Okay, I, I will ask like a couple of questions so that I know the audience better. So the questions that I have is, um, yeah, yeah, who types Malayalam in your computers? Uh, and you just raise a show of hands who type Malayalam in your computers? Not mobile phone, just specifically computers. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I will start with a little background why I am doing this talk, how I got into doing in this talk, and how I got into something that made me do this talk. Okay, so there is this documentary, this documentary won the National Award last year, uh, it's called Dreaming of Words, uh, it got the best National Award uh, documentary. So this person is Nyakela Sridhar, he's an 85 year old person in Kannur, and uh, what he did was that uh, he, uh, he was very interested in languages, so he went to Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, in these 25 years, is like a fourth four standard graduate person. So he does not have a formal education much. But he was interested in languages. So he wanted to make a four language dictionary. So he is like the, uh, I think, would be the first person to make a uh, Kannada, Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu dictionary. And he took it 25 years, that's a long time, to make a dictionary. And this documentary is about uh, his, his life, his work, and that would be an So this person is still in Kannur. 85 years old. So, one of the things that he wanted was to see his work getting published. So, of course, you spend 25 years on the dictionary, so you will need to get it published. Now, the problem with publishing such a book as a dictionary, because it is not academically verified. So, this is a dictionary, you need to verify the words and So, uh, he approached an institute, uh, Kerala Bash Institute, and he tried to get the dictionary out. But the problem with such institute uh, what is that uh, you need to have a monetary value when you publish a book. You need to have a output or a monetary output so that the publishers would need to, uh, would, would want to uh, make a book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, continuing uh, what I was saying. Uh, so, this person was uh, trying to get the dictionary published. And the problem with the book publishers is that they will only publish it when there is like a monetary value for uh, output. So, it's difficult to get the dictionary like this published. So, at the end of the documentary, this person uh, is saying this thing, NQ dictionary gets here and the and the dictionary publish it. I dictionary, there is no problem of this monetary thing or something like that. Uh, 
ഫുള്ളി ഡിക്ഷണറി ഉണ്ടാക്കുമ്പോൾ ഫുള്ളി മലയാള സ്ക്രിപ്റ്റിലാണ് ഫുള്ളി ഡിക്ഷണറി ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ തമിഴിലാണെങ്കിൽ കന്നഡയാണെങ്കിൽ തെലുങ്കിൽ മലയാളത്തിൽ ആയിരിക്കില്ല അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ വേറൊരു കോഡ് മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ട് വർണ്ണം പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഞാനിത് ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക്കലി മലയാളത്തിൽ നിന്ന് കന്നഡയിൽ കാണുന്ന ഒരു ടൂൾ ഉണ്ട് ലൈബ്രറി അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ അത് ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ട് ഒരു ടെസ്റ്റ് വേർഷിപ്പ് ഉണ്ട് ബട്ട് ഇതൊരു അക്കാഡമിക് ആയിട്ട് ഒരു പിയറിവ് നടക്കണം മൊത്തത്തിൽ ഏകദേശം ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ തൗസൻഡ് സംതിങ് എൻട്രീസ് ഉണ്ട് മൊത്തത്തിൽ സോ ഇത് ഇത് പറഞ്ഞത് റെയിൽസ് ആപ്പ് ആണ് ഇത് മെയിൻ ലൈവ് ഡിക്ഷണറി ഡിപ്രസ് എന്ന സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ വെച്ചാണ് പറഞ്ഞത് അപ്പൊ സോ ഈ ഡിക്ഷണറി വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഒന്നര മാസമായിട്ട് ഫുള്ളി ഉണ്ട് ഞാൻ ഞങ്ങൾ ഞങ്ങൾ അടുത്ത ആഴ്ച കാസർഗോഡ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ബാങ്കിൽ വെച്ചിട്ട് ഒരു ഒഫീഷ്യൽ ആയിട്ട് പോയി ചേർന്നിട്ട് പുള്ളി ഞാൻ വിളിച്ചിട്ട് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ചടങ്ങായിട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് സോ ഹിസ് ലൈഫ് വർക്ക് ഈസ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ലൈക്ക് പബ്ലിഷ് ഓക്കെ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ബേസിക്കലി വാട്ട് ദിസ് ഡിക്ഷണറി ഇസ് അപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഈ പരിപാടി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്തത് ഞാൻ ഡിക്ഷണറി ഇങ്ങനെ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്ത് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ഇത് എങ്ങനെ ഇത് ഇവർ ഇത് ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇവർ ഇത് ചെറുതായിട്ട് ഞാൻ മലയാളത്തിൽ കഴിഞ്ഞു ഓക്കെ ഓ സോ ദ തിങ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ദേ വർ ട്രൈങ് ടു മേക്ക് ദിസ് പബ്ലിഷ് ദേ ഹാൻഡ് ലൈക്ക് എ ബേസിക് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ് റിട്ടേൺ ഓഫ് ദി എൻറ്റയർ തിങ് ഐ വിഷ് ഷോ ദാറ്റ് So this is how that PDF looks. This is a PDF file. But it looks pretty straightforward, right? Uh, you have the Maya on the side, and then on the table. So this PDF will be printed to the, wherever you want to. So you can make it as a book. And if I try to... Yeah. If I try to copy here, but it is string here. But it's Maya on the side. It's pretty straightforward. And if I try to... Wait, it's a copy. copy and then i try to paste it let's say here so it will look like this why is it looking like this you see main question it's malayalam on the pdf but why is when i copy it and paste it why is it in english and here we go through the trouble what the hell is this so let's dig deep why is it getting an english output when i copy paste it but it looks malayalam right it looks malayalam now we go to the fundamental question what is a string what are you you've been seeing strings everywhere in the computer what is a string Computers can't understand strings. Computers only understand binary. Zeros and ones are the basic fundamental part of what a computer is. Computers don't understand English. So, people try to hack on it. Uh, how do we get English characters uh, alphabets into the computer? So, Americans made this thing called ASCII. Americans stand for uh, coding the information study something? Yeah, that's what you study in school, yes. Yeah. So, in ASCII, uh, the USA developed this in 1960. This is a long back. when the computers were starting to come. There was a whole lot of history how we went from a five wire to a single wire to digital system. It's like a whole talk. So, I'm not compressing everything, all of those information into like a very simple way. So, uh, ASCII was going to be a 7-bit system. It's not that it is not an 8-bit system, it's a 7-bit system. Meaning, you can uh, map 128 characters, you see. So, for example, A is 65 with the binary value of this and Z is 9. And like a good old American, they said, this is all of the characters that you need for an entire computing needs and the rest of the world was like what because the world is not just english right how do you represent other languages so this is i think the best place to do this talk because ibm has an influential play in how this character and code started when they come to chat file there is no like a another another pressure place to do this talk okay so ibm introduced this thing called code pages so ascii is 7 bit and a byte is 8 bit so usually Previously, you said that the extra one bit is used for a parity check when you just transfer the string, whether the string is uh, uh, working or not. So, I knew and all other people were like, uh, why not lose the remaining one bit for more characters? So, if you add one more bit, it becomes like 256 characters. So, you can map 256 characters with using that remaining one bit. So, I knew all this thing has called code pages. And this 8-bit system, there were a lot of pages for different languages. And all of these variants are called code pages. So Europe is kind of happy right now because they could uh, uh, include some of the characters. Uh, there are some Greek letters here. So Greek will have, but not every Greek letter. Uh, alpha, beta, gamma, the one thing that we use in mathematics. Those Greek letters were mapped in the, uh, this new code page. So this, was a pop, this is a uh, code page that was developed by IBM. And this was a popular code page back then. And IBM and Microsoft were uh, broken, their relationship were broken in the 1990s. So what happened was that the two companies started maintaining their own code page numbers. And uh, because of an Oracle was also in this, so, so they were also making another side of code page. So everybody is like this fragment. So every language or every, every standard will be like, uh, frag, this frag, fragmented is the word, right? Yeah, fragmented in different ways. 
So the two companies started making content and they were conflicts. The same, you uh, bit by bit different in different uh, yeah, characters. And likewise, they will be pronounced. So I will show you this page where it will go on and on. Okay. So these are the number of code pages that we have using that one bit. And you can see it will get a uh, lot more complicated. So IBM has a lot of things to contribute here, Chinese, Korean, Japan, Japanese, Greek, Belarus, there are a lot of languages here. And it, the list just goes on and on and on and on. And there are like, for different systems, there will be like different code pages. If you have to go to the very end, these are like the all the character recordings that we have. It was like cluster of a mess uh, during 1980s, 1990s. So how do you go from this? So what is a string is a question. But string is different, uh, represented differently by different companies or different uh, standards. And yeah, now I will show you uh, how that dictionary right. So I will show you how to open a file, a CSV file. So when you open a CSV file, uh, the software will ask a question. So let me open this in LibreOffice. I'm going to open the delivery office again. Yeah, this is a question. What is the character set used? And I think most of the people, when you open a CSV file, you might have seen this. There are a lot of character sets here. And these character sets are basically these code pages. That extra one bit was used for different languages. So there will be like different character sets. So these are incompatible with each other. So when you open one thing, so if this is open currently in unique code, which is the standard now. If I do this in another character set, the character will be entirely different. Because the representation will be different. So every character will be has its own, uh, its, its own thing. So you can see Apple has one thing, so like for Apple, dogs are another. So it was like a cluster of a mess back then. Okay, now, oh, this is a famous example. So this is called Harry Potter and the Magna. So a person uh, in Russia was uh, saying that uh, uh, they were not getting a new Harry Potter book in Russia. So he's this person, I think it's a she, she sent this to uh, a person, uh, her friend in France, saying that I would like this new Harry Potter book, and this is my Russian alphabet, and uh, you know, my Russian alphabet. So it is Russian alphabet. Why, why are they specifying the Russian alphabet? Is that at the time they need to use that specific character encoding to display Russian, and when this email reaches the French person, they will get it like this, because the character encoding that is used in France doesn't understand this uh, Russian. So when that one bit got changed in this way, the output will be new. So what did this person do? Quickly wrote that same thing. So that's the answer. <laughs> now if you send this, obviously you can't find who is this particular person, but that person was very persistent. Now you can see the characters were exactly matching whatever that was in, even though it's not Russian. And so this email, uh, this uh, uh, mail got sent to Russia, and a uh, Russian person knew this. This is the problem. So that person manually go to check the character sets and make the character set, which is a very difficult thing to try to do this manually. So you can see the problem starts happening when you start printing it or start sending it to different people, sharing people. So this is the infamous Harry Potter example. So where are the Indian language code pages? You see, simply this talking about Europe, you're talking about America, uh, other countries. Where are the Indian language code pages? So India also tried to do their own thing, and it's called ISKI. And it has a one thing, Indian standard code for information to change, right? Atmanal Pada, I would say, 1990s. And ISKI, uh, so this was in, uh, developed by the government itself, but it didn't went popular. It didn't go popular. And so, but there was a cool thing about ISKI though. So, you can see in Devanagari or Malayalam, there are like some characters will be like similar. For example, in Malayalam, Ka and E, uh, these things are like common in many uh, common languages. So, that character map would be same, even if the is key layer for Malayalam or Bengali or anything would be different. So that's like a good thing, but nobody really used this actually. And that's a good thing, by the way. It would have been an extra one mess if it was actually used. Okay, and Unicode was introduced in 1995, and it saved the world, I would say. Emojis, uh, yeah, or Malayalam, any characters, is visually, every character in the world that you see was represented by Unicode. And that basically saved the world because there is no problem anymore. Anyway, everybody could understand Unicode, uh, WhatsApp can understand Unicode, Mac can understand Unicode, everybody, everybody could understand Unicode. And now we got very variety of emojis as well. And that were all thanks to Unicode. So, how did Indians then try to uh, write Malayalam and other in the languages in 1990s or in 2000s? Because there was no Unicode at the time. 
The simplest hack would be to replace the English characters in the font to uh, my own. That's the simplest hack. So I will show that font. Let's see. So this is the MLTT Ambri font. And this font is basically <coughs> the character of ASCII 65 modules. Or not. They replaced it A with R. And they did that for every English character in that font. So basically what they get is that the underlying byte or the bit, bit would be the English one. But when this font is loaded, it will be shown as Malayalam. And that is why that file that I opened before is giving English. Because the for, if we, without the font, this will be gibberish. And since I'm copy pasting it underneath the character, it's actually English. It's actually English. And when the font is there only, the Malayalam will be visible. It's basically symmetric encryption, if you can say it. That's because you need that key, right? And that key is the font. So, Indians are really smart in this, we'll say. But this is not something limited to India. I think many other countries also try to do this. I think I will show this. I will ask the question in SLC group today. And Santosh was saying that, yeah, I asked why did the ASCII become prominent? Why did it, uh, every region for went to replace ASCII font? So, Akshay was saying that, uh, when you, the problem with Malayalam is that you don't have to actually have like ka, ka, you like the the control, uh, the problem is like the like, click click focus, the click click focus. So is key couldn't really properly solve this one actually I'm not sure. I have not checked it. Probably should ask Charlie. I don't know if Charlie would know this. He's totally kind of behind it. So Santosh was saying that it gets even more messier. Myanmar, for example, uh, had their own uh, say, custom encoding and it was being used until 2019. The entire country had a standard unicode data set and they have fixed it. There is also, uh, there are like hundreds of hundreds of encoding schemes. And, yeah, and they still, the Myanmar, for example, they still use that system on that unicode is what he was saying. And now Myanmar government uh, made October 1 to sign as U day. Basically, switched to unicode. That was the day that they switched, the entire country switched to unicode. So it's still, the problem is still happening. And we can still see ASCII in the world. Uh, exactly the dictionary. It's 2023 and we are still seeing us. So, yeah, so that's basically how this one. The demo, I'm not sure. What are you mentioned by demo? Uh, that's the demo, right? Yeah, okay. Demo real? No, no, uh, the demo. Okay, I think I can show the digital version of that file. Okay, that's good. But you can see without the font, it's basically just English because we haven't uh, mapped the font yet. Now, where is the font? I have the font. The MLTT article is mentioned here. What's happening? Forum for non font. So, without the font, this would look English. Previously, if you went back to internet in 2004, 2007 years, you when you go to Manama on a uh, it would be like this. And Manama, you would, they would ask you to install a font. And that's how Malayalam used to work uh, in back in the day. Uh, but now, thanks to Unicode, that is not needed anymore. You don't need to install fonts or anything. Uh, what, where is the font? Oh, oh wait, I should put on PHP server here. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. And then the font gets loaded here. There we go. It takes it up Malayalam. So that's how uh, Malayalam used to work back in the uh, early stages of internet. And this is the demo I think I so this the initial part of this talk that I mentioned about this whole uh, new string mess is from this talk called plain text. I mean, is plain text actually a plain text? It's a, basically the gist of the talk. And as a lot of examples, it's a superb talk. If you want to know about strings, I would highly recommend. Uh, Billy Joel has a funny example from Russia regarding the Gaussian unicorn problem, and that is uh, this talk I would highly recommend for you to watch. Okay, now let's come back to the dictionary. So the dictionary uh, source token was created in Adobe PageMaker 7. Adobe PageMaker was released in Ancient 2001. Adobe officially discontinued that product in 2004, but if you go to any DTP center in Kerala, you will find that job there. It, I would say it, would, it survived the test of time. Uh, it is still being used. I met with the DTP person, I argued with him about it. He was like, it's the best software in the world. Yes. I will not change. 
Adobe doesn't work. Our uh, most of I think these problems are in every state in India. It's not just just limited to Kerala. Uh, they are really like Adobe Page Maker Seven and Adobe Photoshop Seven as well. So, uh, it's uh, free. That's the thing. The thing is pirated. Uh, Adobe new products is not easily pirated. Yeah. So the first time, and I think this is for thing with older folks I would say because they once you learn a software, why you learn something else? Because it's working perfectly right. Yeah. Kind of like maybe I have to say. If it really works, it works. You don't update it. You don't change it. I agree with the point, but there should be unique code now. It should actually support unique code. Page Maker doesn't support unique code. It doesn't support at all. So it, even using this software in 2003 is criminal, I would say. Yeah, still people use it. And I, I can't put the exclamation mark on because I have put it on. Because they need to move away from this. The entire world has changed, but they're still using the old version. And one thing the problem I think would be that there is lack of unique code for our as well. That might be the reason I would say. Because there are a lot of asking for uh, so how do we get a unique code font? We need people to make it. And where are the people? So there is a you. Make a Malala font. Okay, so conversion dictionary from the page maker files to the website that I do, someone.net, was a complete pain. I won't say the rest of the words. So it was a complete pain. And I will do an entirely separate talk on how this data cleanup was made. I think that, that needs an entire talk on its own. And, and we need to make the dictionary website. So we have the dictionary in this particular thing. We have a dictionary in this particular thing. And how do you convert this whole thing into a proper website, proper data? You will need to convert ASCII Malayala to Unicode. That's the way. ASCII Malayala to Unicode. And that's uh, the software called PyEnce. So the software that I mentioned in the title is called PyEnce. And PyEnce was released in 2008. It is a product from South Nara University. And you know, like initially, uh, since the Unicode becomes starting to become popular, Many Malaya books, many like uh, Aidiya Malaya, and many such books were already digitalized using ASCII. So we needed to convert this into a proper format, and that's when uh, PyEnce as a software, it's a, like it's a Python library, uh, it was released in 2008, and that software came to be, and this was used to uh, convert a lot of uh, books. So I will show you the release email. Uh, this is the uh, previously before GitHub was the uh, people used to uh, make software on. Uh, how did they make software? <laughs> <laughs> there were like a lot of things uh, back then. Sa uh, Savana, I think SFC was using Savana. Savana, you know, Gnu had a Savana instance, and this is where SFC was used to uh, reside before. Oh, this is from Linux kernel. Used to be done over. Yeah, Linux kernel used to be done to release this. You can still see that it still resembles to the 2004 uh, old classic yeah, website. What the market tag? Yeah, there was a market tag. Yeah. <laughs> and this, there was this also, that, so then when you make a new project, you announce it on a mailing list. So Santosh made this software in the final library, and you can see the date, 2008 on a June 3rd, 940. Uh, and he made this project, announced this project, PyEnce. And PyEnce Python later, this is a small software. ASCII, it will just basically convert any text written in ASCII, HTML media, I think, and it will just convert into Unicode. Okay. So, and I think uh, many of the SMC old software you can find Malayana comments in the source code. Uh, I think that's like a special thing that you can find when you dig deep into SMC source code. And Kerala Barnia, that was the first book I think was converted and it got converted to uh, Unicode. So you can find this in Wiki Grandashala. So this is like the Malayana version of Wiki source. Uh, it's a Wikipedia project. And the entire thing was I believe converted to Python. And yeah, most of the links doesn't exist anymore because 2008. And uh, Santosh Devdev, Nishan Nisan, and Shankar Pillai, and he was licensed in Geek 33. And uh, he was then our transition to another table. He was uploaded to Wikisource. And that's how it was started. You can find a lot of uh, amazing threads in this SMC mailing list. Lot of history from 2004. And a lot of stuff happened in the mailing list. So, uh, when I look back to the history, I can see a lot of uh, things happening like uh, Fedora 9. When was that happened? Like 2008. A long back pattern on it. And like a Trishu dictionary, one person was asking, we need a Trishu slang dictionary. And yes. that's a good idea, but who will execute it? That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> if we have more people, we can do that. I would like a Kanu dictionary, that's something I'm interested in. Kanu slang dictionary, because Kanu, Kasavan would be another suggestion. But you need people to do this. So it, it's a fun project that I think maybe if you want to try, I, I can help with making the dictionary. So there's like a lot of, oh, is it? Is key to Unicode converter here? Yeah, okay. So I think there will be some people using it. 
So you can go to this mailing list and like know a lot of history you can uh, you can find from them. And I think uh, Malala Mousia was at this event back then. Malala Mous, so many things happened. Firefox 3, oh, Firefox 3. <laughs> now Firefox is at 120, I believe. So long back. Yeah, one month, I think this is one month only. The number of concerts that happened one month. Uh, now the mailing list is pretty good then, by the way. Uh, there's nothing else there happening at the moment, but it's, it's very, it was a very active time of SNC back then. Okay, now I'm talking about free credit. So, uh, free credit. Uh, connect to this, uh, uh, this thing. Wait, I will share this. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't reply to that. <laughs> so next software that I am going to talk about is Freakens. So Freakens was a software that was created in 2019 and Geneva is a newspaper that is published from Rwanda. Geneva is the official mouthpiece newspaper of the Communist Party of India and uh, Geneva basically what is, this is the first largest newspaper in the world to entirely run on Libre software, uh, Solander software. So, when the people who did this entire migration is a common company in Andamani called Alpha Work, and uh, they basically did the whole conversion from the Negev newspaper to an entirely. So, Janega previously was not asking by the way, PageMaker. There are still newspapers in Kerala using PageMaker as their main thing. Wow, unbelievable. And so, when they need to convert from Unicode to ASCII, they use these hacky tools to do this as a government. I forgot about the government. The government also uses ASCII uh, text skills. Uh, I think I can show that example here. Okay. So oh, no. So I was talking about free and free. No, no, no. Uh, screen share, yeah. What about reading? Reading is reading. So this is what the oh, yes, the thing is that the software was called FreeCats, but the Geneva people didn't like it, so they renamed it to Geneva Community. Uh, but I think the FreeCats would be the best name for the software. So basically, what it does is it's an editor. You put in ASCII text onto it, and it will convert it to Unicode. This is an app. Oh, this software is only available for Linux, by the way. Uh, this is very rare to see. It's not cross platform at all. Uh, that is for the Geneva system. Geneva has been running for three years now, entirely free software, and this software FreeCats is being used. Or generally, it is being used uh, uh, every day. So that must have still be published entirely in free software. So then I mean you can maybe type something, uh, type something there. No, you can type this, type something random. No, no, no. switch to ask. You know, first thing is switch to ask the button. Yeah, and now type some gibberish, English, something. And then uh, click the convert button. There you go, that's the equal Malayalam from the ASCII text. So when you get the point. So it's basically a comfort lab. Okay, now I'm not sharing something. Okay, so that's basically, uh, this is the source code of Freakens, um, Freakens QT, and uh, that's basically the source code, and I think Python's I've already introduced, right? So this is how the uh, Python uh, instance will write, ASCII to Unicode, give the, so this is the what Malayalam is in ASCII, A, B, F, F, W. So when you type that in some place, you will uh, pronounce as Malayalam. And, uh, oh, I forgot to do the demo, okay. So this is the and that's the demo that I showed, and I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot the demo, I think the demo was the cutting. So this is Calder, right? Now if I change the font of this, uh, L, you will get a groovy view. But the problem, so you can see that the asking character got converted. But the actual test that I typed was able to be the user, right? But some fonts has a different uh, yeah. standard, I would say. So they would map the and group differently. So even within the ASCII font, there's a different standard. Yeah, so now we get the text like this. So that's basically the part the text in the title meant. Uh, Okay, so that's frequency. 
And thanks to uh, Bayans and Frickens, uh, uh, this dictionary was launched as Sama.net and uh, making Yankee list leaders 25 years becoming easy. So, the, there's a particular thing called phrase of the results of it. This Bayan software was created long time. Who's saying? Even that repo was unmade and worn away, but that software still worked. Even if you make something valuable, it will still be usable years and years from now on. Because this article, I don't think, will be ended. 20, 30 years ago. If it's not still what you can't do. And Nyakila's uh, research work was easily able to, uh, because we were, there was urgency to get this dictionary up and running. Uh, because research is like uh, health wise is a bit down at the moment. So we wanted to publish the as quickly as possible. And without these libraries, it would have been possible. Thanks to clients and clients and the team behind it. So, uh, SMC community, I would say uh, there are a lot of uh, people in SMC. So, this was the uh, photo taken at the media post. And the engine city here, uh, he is like one of the person uh, from AlphaGo. Uh, that did the conversion of the Jalegan newspaper. Mm. Yeah, Mujib, yeah, Mujib was also from Nago, they were the people were there. So Mujib usually goes to many universities in Kerala and say, please know, please ask him. So uh, Mujib basically is kind of like a proponent. So uh, basically what does is the people are used to ask him. So universities, government departments would uh, uh, ask, uh, request them to do a training on Unicode. So Mujib used to do, do that a lot. And this is a picture from 2019, different kind of SMC, like a very large people are fully remote, so we can't get a good, uh, good picture anyway. So people are fragmented around uh, the world itself, like people are some people are in Europe. So the, this is a remotely entitled photo. So this is from 2018 picture. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Jishnu is wearing a Google Summer of Code t-shirt here. SMC used to be in GSOC in 2014. But that's an entire controversy that I would say. Uh, so it is not a G so okay, anymore. But uh, people are still there and they want to do things. But the thing is that the average age of the people in these photos are a bit high, right? Uh, and I want to bring that down. Uh, meaning that we need to contributors uh, presence. So I think uh, I think I'm kind of doing like a marketing thing. So if you would like to do something for Malayala model, we have a lot of things to I have a lot of ideas as well uh, to implement uh, with the SMC, like for the man. So if you would like to contribute, we are looking for more contributors and we have people who are willing to mentor for the thing. You can just simply go to a telegram slash mentors group, just talk to GitHub and GitLab, go through stuff and you will find something that you find to feel interesting. What I found from the last 10 years of working with free software is that uh, when you only have passion about a software tool, you won't be able to actively contribute. Otherwise, it's just hard discussion. Yantriga my book was contribution on also. And only if you are really into the stuff, uh, do it, uh, I would say. And uh, when I started in SMC because I wanted to type Malayalam in my computer, and that's how I started contributing. So this is a tool that I built. It's to type Malayalam on Mac and Linux. And this was my intention to get to start with contributing to SMC. So that's I think would be a proper and sustainable way to uh, start with SMC. And if you would like to uh, make unicode fonts, yeah, making more Malayalam fonts, I think, uh, please contact us. Yeah, I think I have a couple more things if I have time to say. <laughs> yeah, even writing the SMC blog is a task itself. So, need volunteers for that. And, uh, and now, uh, some people here, Alec is working on building uh, Google. Uh, like, oh, another uh, page, uh, software like page maker, Google input tools. So, Google used to build this uh, IAB thing for Windows desktop. In, uh, they, they released this software, many people started using that to type Malayalam on Windows. And what did Google do? Killed by Google.com. They killed the software. <laughs> They killed the software in 2015, that website is not anymore, that has been me. But what Malayalam did do is that they take that install VXC file, share it. They share that file still using some telegram groups or some website. Google officially discovered the thing, but people still keep sharing it and still keep using So we are trying to do that by bringing Wacom for Windows and uh, Alan Mufil, uh, Anu, and uh, are also working on to get uh, Wacom project, Wacom getting running on Windows so that there is no. Google input tools for uh, Windows. They don't have to rely on a defunct tool. Okay. And I would highly recommend watching the document that I mentioned, Nyanjay is a dream of course. And uh, one uh, uh, off-topic thing, um, <coughs> I am I live in Kunnamalam, so <laughs> Kunnamalam is like a uh, one, it's, it's, it's like an it's, it's like a, uh, uh, a we like to we have already have a boss company in Trishul. Reactive. So we are planning to do a Kundamal kind of post meetup in December. So we are having discussions regarding this going to do is we obviously going to do each other Kundal, of course. And uh, the group is FSG Trishur in Telegram. And SMC group is also next to Telegram. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you.
the Windows tools you're using, what, IMB? Uh, IMB in Rust. Something that will be trusted. 